Tonight, police at the scene of a serious crash just outside Port Pirie. And the end of an era as the Lola Air Peninsula says goodbye to rail. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. We start tonight with news of a serious crash just outside of Port Perry between a motorbike rider and a crane this afternoon. Dominic Beaton has more. At 12.30 today, emergency services were called out to a serious roadside fatality at 225 Warnertown Road. A 25-year-old man from Paralawi has tragically lost his life. After his motorbike collided with a crane just outside of Max Crane and Equipment in Solomon Town. Emergency services were quick to respond, but the man sadly died at the scene. Major crash officers have spent the afternoon investigating the incident, cordoning off a large section of Warnertown Road just off Coppinger Road. Traffic has been diverted off the main street leading into town all afternoon, with SAPO asking motorists to avoid the area. Police are urging motorists to remain vigilant on our roads during wet weather. The man's death takes the South Australian road toll up to 51, compared to 33 at the same time last year. Dominic Beaton reporting there. The Lower Air Peninsula gathered today to farewell one of the last trains to use the century-old railway. It marks the end of an era that locals say was fundamental in opening up and connecting the region. One last delivery for the century-old railway. The final load of grain being transported to Port Lincoln bound for markets overseas. It was just something that you look forward to. Uh, uh, from a distance and knew that while the train was going past, something was happening. Now the rail has come to an end with grain transport Viterra ending its contract with rail company Genesee in Wyoming. Hundreds of people gathering in Cummins to farewell the iconic rail. A day to reminisce and think of all of the wonderful things that that railway has meant to you as an individual and to the whole of the communities. Back in its heyday, there are a dozen locomotives like this one transporting grain along these rails from the farmers to Port Lincoln, opening up and connecting the communities along the Air Peninsula. The centre of the Air Peninsula was the area that benefited most from uh, the, the rail and of course that's where the rail eventually moved through. The railway used to employ over 600 workers. Today it employs just 35. The drivers receiving a hero's welcome as they stop in town for the very last time. These two sisters holding a picture of their father taken in the 50s with the same train as the one here today. Even though Dad has died for about 30 years, we still have a connection with the train and so does our children. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Cymec Energy has lodged an application for a 135 megawatt battery south of Port Augusta. The project set to tie in with the company's other renewable initiatives. Move over Tesla. The title for the world's biggest battery could have a new challenger and it's proposed to be right here in the Upper Spencer Gulf. About a, an hour's discharge uh, that will be located seven kilometres south of Port Augusta on the Port Patterson Road. Cymec Energy seeking the project's approval from the Essential Services Commission. The lithium-ion battery will work hand-in-hand -hand with the company's new 280-megawatt solar farm at Coltana. The battery will help to firm the intermittent generation that comes out of the solar farm so that we can deliver a, a firmer, more reliable energy uh, into the grid. All in all, we should be very safe with the power supply moving forward. The energy giant says up to 60 jobs could be created during construction, as well as other permanent positions. There's more employment, so we're pretty fortunate at the moment. One project will come to uh, completion and then we step into a new one. Pending approval from the state's regulatory body, the battery's first sod could be turned within months. We'd hope to start construction on site around October of this year and looking somewhere between a 9 to 12 month build. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Construction is underway on uneven sections along the Horrocks Highway, with the state government committing $500,000 to repair sections of the road. The highway will eventually undergo a $55 million redevelopment to improve road safety and productivity. The RAA has long called for an upgrade due to the amount of accidents. Between 2012 and 2016, there were 74 crashes, resulting in four deaths and 109 injuries. Concerned Wilmington residents say the speed limit outside their homes is threatening their safety. They want it lowered, with the move gaining support from local politicians. This is a road Wilmington local Charlie Edwards dreads. Yeah, definitely a threat. The speed limits around his neighbourhood on the edge of the Horrocks Highway, making the walk into town a fearful journey. Trucks, cars, uh, caravanners, buses, you know, they all come down here. The road signs heading towards Corn indicate 80 kilometres, while it's 110 in the other direction. Locals want the signs pushed back until 100 metres past the town's last house. So I'd like to see that it gets changed to 50, particularly for the residents. Residents and the local Progress Society have joined forces to express their concerns to the Transport Department, but say they're yet to receive an acceptable reply. You know, 10 years ago you might have needed to, to slow down at one point in time. Now you probably need to start to slow down a little bit further out. Local MP Dan Van Holst Pelican has thrown his cautious support behind the proposal. And I'm very optimistic that, uh, that now uh, we'll, we'll get a positive hearing. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Broken Hill approves the Jubilee Oval upgrade and organisers of wireless charity bowls select this year's recipient. Welcome back. A multi-million dollar upgrade of a Broken Hill football ground has been given the go-ahead by local councillors. Jubilee Oval's development application was approved at last night's council meeting. An upgrade soon to kick off. What could happen here, the potential to bring other sporting groups to town, particularly if you look at the AFL, what is the potential there to get a, a major game back in Broken Hill? Last night's approval gave AFL Broken Hill the all clear to begin. Demolishing a section of the bleachers for the new change rooms will be the first step, with work expected to be completed by Easter. Once the football season's over, we can then start work on the existing change rooms. They'll be extended, they'll be modernised. We're putting a second story on the ground manager's office. Meanwhile, the room was divided on whether councillors should receive a pay rise. Councillors were split down the middle, with the city's mayor using her casting vote to approve the motion. And the budget for the new pound at the city's airport has been increased. First estimated at $250,000, it's now four hundred and fifty. dollars The work will start in earnest you know, very quickly, so we would expect that probably September, October, we should, uh, at the outside, we should have that done, you know, barring any major, uh, you know, major mishaps. Patrick Reinke, 7. And Spencer Golf News. The Wyala Young Tradespeople and Professionals Group have officially chosen this year's charity ball partner. A local men's health advocacy group has been selected. The Young Tradespeople and Professionals annual charity ball has raised thousands of dollars over the past few years. Organisers say that this year's recipients are a worthy local cause. And, uh, we've had the applications close and we've selected INAT, which is I'm Not Afraid to Talk. An organisation which targets men needing mental health support by encouraging males to speak out if they're going through a difficult time. Men's mental health is, a, is obviously a really big issue at the moment. There is a stigma about uh, men not talking about mental health and, and just their issues in general. Previously the charity ball has helped other mental health organisations and drug addiction groups from across the region. Selectors say INAT's application stood out this year. The part that really drew us to INAT's application was that they're wanting to move into a youth mental health space so they're looking at upskilling their members and volunteers. And organisers are encouraging people to buy tickets. One can attend, we just like to host it. It's a great opportunity to dress up, um, you know, have a great night out and support a really Cause. Details can be found on their website. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
Port Lincoln City Council is calling on local businesses and community members to work together in developing a pest management program. It comes in response to the increased population of pigeons being reported around town, the bird raising several concerns around health issues and damage to buildings. The council is conducting a survey to work out the best methods to use in managing the pest. For more information, visit the council's website. While a city council has sealed another section of the Fitzgerald Bay Road near Point Lowly, it's part of a three-year plan to make sections of the coastline more accessible. Another section sealed, a much-needed upgrade for Wyala's dirt roads near Point Lowly. It's been a, a multi-year ongoing program for the benefit of the ratepayers um, not, that live out that way, but also for our tourists and our community in Wyala. Wyala City Council says this is just the beginning, with plans for more ahead. Um, it will be complemented by a three-year, $14 million program that Council's looking to roll out as part of its oncoming budget process. Visitors welcoming the new section, saying it will entice tourists. Yeah, more will come, you know, because ones that don't go off-road very much, that'll be a better idea. And Mr Cowley says investing in infrastructure is more than just an upgrade. That obviously they enjoy their visit here, or ultimately they decide that Wyla is the place for them to live. The sealed section begins at Fitzgerald Bay turn off within a few k's of Backy Point with plans to further extend out to Douglas Point and the early feedback from visitors is positive. It's lovely being by the beach, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. It's a beautiful part of the world, I can tell you that. Make sure you stop by if you ever visit. Stay with us after the break. Our fishing experts will have the weekend tips and Louise will have the local weather forecast. Hello again. Port Perry is set to host an Australian Cricket Association Masters Series this October. A 2020 match will be played on Memorial Oval between at least eight former Australian and international players facing off against a local representative team. It's in line with our progress at the moment where we need to bring special events, bring more people into our community and I think it is thankful that we have such a good facility. $1,000 will also be up for grabs under a scholarship program targeted at local kids in the region, along with a series of coaching clinics. Budding art groups in the far west have been encouraged to apply for state funding. The initiative aims to boost the art industry in Broken Hill and surrounding communities. It's called the Country Arts Support Program Grant. It's an annual grant that comes out and it's only for people who live in regional areas. In the recent round of funding handouts, over $250,000 was given to 83 projects. They included classical jazz and blues performances, touring theatre and residency opportunities. But there is a catch. The grants are exclusively aimed at non-profit organisations, local government and collectives. It's really for projects which are going to enrich the knowledge and skills and experiences of the community. West Darling Arts will be holding an information session about the funding program on June 5th. And I'll talk about the application process, what people need to do, uh, but people can also talk about, but people can call any time to talk about any ideas that they have. Applications close at the end of July. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Time for a look at what's biting in the Gulf. Here's fishing tips. It's been so cold, not many people have a good report from last weekend. But what I have heard, there's still the yellowfin whiting around the place, which I think they would have been well gone by now. They're usually down around the Port Broughton area at this time of the year, but at this stage they're not. When we start looking at uh, Port Piri, the King George Whiting have been there. We did tell you Eastern Shoal, but I can say they're a little bit closer at the moment. They've moved into the top end of Wards Pit. And if you have any marks over around the Barrows Beach area, you should be able to find yourself a good feed of them as well. As we said also last week, don't forget to put a squid jag over. Plenty of those things happening. And we also need to start looking for a few more of those flathead. I think there's a few around the third and fourth creek area. G'day and welcome to this week's fish tips from Port Augusta to the North. It's so a good catches of King George Whiting. Further south they're a little bit larger, right up around the top, up towards the powerhouse. They're actually still getting them, but they're a little bit smaller. There are squid, lots of squid down along the jetties at night. 
uh, and also out in the middle banks around Marches Bank and also around uh, the old number nine bank there. On these calm nights, try for some garfish out if you can and tolerate the cold, go out for a bit of spotlighting and that through the mangroves, getting nice garfish. Also have some Tommy Ruffs around as well. And that's all we have from the Jewel of the North. The town has definitely been squid coming off the uh, land-based areas throughout Wyala. The best areas to target have definitely been around the Point Lowly areas left of the sand hills. Um, just make sure you stay out of those exclusion zones. There's been some really good nice sized squid coming along from there. Um, a lot of the guys have been hitting their bag limit as well. Also throughout Wyala there's been some nice land-based silver whiting coming in off of the um, beaches and also further towards Cowlitz Landing there's been some nice silver whiting there. For the boat anglers, snapper have been a bit quiet this week. There's been some nice catches of King George whiting from the Mount, Mount Young grounds. G'day and welcome to Fishing Tips in Port Lincoln. Well, locally the whiting have been a little bit patchy, but some better fish have been caught down the passage, but they're still not as good as you'd expect for this time of year. Squid have been caught in the bay here in Lincoln, um, up along the North Shore and around Boston Island. There's been a school of salmon moving along the North Shore. Moving over to Coffin Bay, um, the farm beach grounds continue to produce some nice whiting. Um, and there's been some snapper up to about four kilos. Well, that's it for fishing tips this week. We've got a good day of weather coming up on Saturday, so get out there and try and get some fish. And now time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Louise. Good evening. The showers cleared today, but it was still pretty chilly. Temperatures were in the mid-teens. Port Augusta reached 16 degrees, while a 15. Port Lincoln partly cloudy in 16 degrees. Broken Hill 13. Port Perry 15 in Adelaide. It was partly cloudy in 16 today. On the satellite now, showers over southern South Australia due to a vigorous cold front. Northern areas, however, are largely dry. Now to tomorrow's waters. South to southwest winds reaching 15 knots. Seas at a metre. Sunrise at about 7.14 tomorrow morning with sunset at 5.19. Dry but cold again tomorrow. Port Augusta 17, Wyala and Port Lincoln 16, Coffin Bay 17. Wooden it frosty and 16. Broken Hill partly cloudy and 15. 15, Port Perry 16, Clare will reach just 13 degrees and Adelaide it should be partly cloudy and 16 degrees. Looking ahead to the next four days now, partly cloudy in Port Lincoln 17, Saturday 18 on Sunday before cloud and 16 on Monday. Cleve will be 16 Saturday cloudy and 17 Sunday before dropping down to 15 degrees on Monday. It should be dry in Woodna with temperatures also in the mid-teens. Wyala, partly cloudy and 16 Saturday, 17 Sunday and on Monday. Similar conditions in Port Augusta, 18 on Saturday and Sunday, 16 degrees on Monday. And Kadena will be dry Saturday, showers and 17 on Sunday before clearing up by Monday. Port Perry will be cloudy and 17 Saturday, showers and 16 Sunday, 15 on Monday. You'll need to rug up in Clare, 13 on Saturday and Sunday, just down to 12 on Monday. Broken Hill will be dry but cool there. So while rain looks to have disappeared, John, it's looking like a very chilly weekend. Back to you. Looking a wee bit chilly in the Gulf. Thanks, Louise. And that's the local news this Thursday evening. Thanks for your company. I'll have some updates later on in the evening, but until then, enjoy your evening's viewing here on 7. On behalf of the team, it's good night.